Hello students, in this video we are going to cover four important properties of DNA block elements that is magnetic, color, complex and catalytic properties. First, let's start with magnetic properties. Consider two iron bars, one with the influence of magnetic field, other without the influence of magnetic field. Now consider three substances. We can observe in the first case, the first substance is getting attracted, second substance is getting repelled and the third substance is strongly attracted. In the second case, no attraction, no attraction but the third substance is getting attracted. So substances which move towards the magnetic field are called paramagnetic substances while substances which move away from the magnetic field are called diamagnetic substances. Substances which are strongly attracted towards iron metal are called ferromagnetic substances. Magnetic moment is a physical quantity that calculates the magnetic moment, magnetic property in a compound. Paramagnetism arises due to the presence of unpaired electron, each such electron having a magnetic moment. Magnetic moment is denoted by the symbol mu and it is calculated by using a very simple formula root over n, n plus 2, where n is the number of unpaired electrons, mu is magnetic moment, bm is the unit that stands for Bohr magneton. Consider this table is very simple to understand. I'll just explain with the help of Fe2 plus ion. Can you tell me what is the atomic number of hydrogen? It is 26. What is the electronic configuration? Argon. Till argon, 18 electrons will be filled in. Then we have 4s and 3d. We have 8 electrons to be filled more. And 4s will be filled first because it has lesser energy. And 6 electrons will be in D subshell. Now it is in Fe2 plus state. We have to remove 2 electrons from the lower energy 4s subshell. Now what we are having? We are having a D6 system. Now how many D orbitals are there in a D subshell? There are 5 D orbitals in a D subshell. 5 orbitals and you need to fill in 6 electrons. So first fill up singly and then pairing will take place, Hans rule. Now we can see that this is paired. There are 4 unpaired electrons. So in this case n is equal to 4. Now we can calculate magnetic moment that is mu root over n and plus 2. In this case n is equal to 4. So you can simply calculate and now it will come out to be 4.90. Let me tell you a very special trick about calculation of magnetic moment. The magnetic moment values will be approximately equal to the number of unpaired electrons. So in this case number of unpaired electron is 4 that is why magnetic moment will be 4 point something. In this case we can tell from the magnetic moment value itself that it is 1.73 and in this case number of unpaired electron will be 1, it's 2.84, 2 point something. So number of unpaired electron will be 2, in this case number of unpaired electron will be 4, in this case number of unpaired electron will be 2. So just remember that if the number point something, that first number is will be equal to the number of unpaired electron. And these are the experimental values, these are the calculated values. Next, we are moving ahead to learn about color properties of transition metal ions. Color. What strikes in our mind as soon as we hear about it? We can visualize a lot of colors, isn't it? Now, have you ever wondered why this, why, why do we see these colors? Generally, we had heard that we see colors due to reflection. If there is a bulb, light is getting absorbed by the substance and it is reflecting. But this theory later on proved to be a failure. Hence, next theory has been proposed. 
the new theory suggested that we seek the color which is complementary to the absorbed color. This substance is absorbing light or you can say color and the complementary color is reflected and that's why we see the color complementary to the color absorbed. To find the complementary color, we can take the help of Manshell wheel. Manshell wheel will tell you that purple is the complementary color of yellow, blue is the complementary color of orange, and green is the complementary color of red, and vice versa. But this theory has been ruled out as it could not explain the existence of colors like pink, brown, etc. The next theory that came up considered totally a new concept. As we all know, we have 5D orbitals. Metals are having 5D orbitals here with the same energy and that's why it is called degenerate energy level. Let's consider we have one electron in the D subshell. When electrons from atoms or molecules approach these 5D orbitals, the 5D orbitals split into two energy levels. It is called crystal field splitting. Now, this electron Will, will be occupying the lower energy subshell. Now, once you provide energy, this electron is going to absorb light energy and it will be transported to higher energy d orbital. This is called DD transition. As we all know, higher the energy, lower is the stability. In order to attain stability, electron in the higher energy level emits energy and comes back to the lower energy level. This electron will be emitting energy and will fall to the lower energy orbital. The energy emitted, if its frequency matches with that of a color in visible spectrum, we see color. Transition elements and their ions exhibit colors due to the presence of unpaired electrons in d orbitals which causes dd transition. The color absorbed corresponds to the complementary color of the light absorbed. Some oxoanions like permanganate ion, chromate ion, dichromate ion exhibits color due to charge transfer phenomena. This is the configuration. Uh, D0 system, D0 system, and we can see that this is the corresponding examples. SC3 plus is a D0 system, and there is no D electron and no DD transition is possible. That is why they are appearing as colorless. Similarly, Ti4 plus, there is no D electron and its configuration is 3D0, no DD transition, and is why no color. But in case of titanium 3 plus, there is one D electron, there is a possibility of DD transition and hence it shows purple color. Similarly, VI4 plus, VI3 plus, they also show color because there is a possibility of DD transition due to the presence of D electrons. So what we can conclude from here is that in order to show color, the D subshell needs to be partially filled with D electrons. Similarly, CR3 plus is a D3 system and it shows violet color and we can see all the examples. Fe3 plus is yellow in color and it is due to the presence of 5D electrons in 3D subshell. Same explanation, color appears due to the presence of partially filled D electrons. Now in case of zinc, a ZN2 plus still has fully filled D subshell. In case of fully filled D subshell, there is no possibility of DD transition and hence it appears to be colorless. 
traveling ahead, we have formation of complex compounds. Complex compounds are those in which the metal atoms or ions bind to a number of anions or neutral molecules giving complex species with characteristic properties. We will be learning about complex compounds in coordination com compounds chapter where we will see that complex compounds are nothing but they are formed by metal which is from D block elements and this metal will bind with neutral molecules or negatively charged molecules and there will be interaction coordinate covalent bond with ligand we call this a species of the ligand which is having electron rich they may be neutral molecules with lone pair or negatively charged they are called ligands so there will be coordinate covalent bond between ligand and the metal and the resulting compound will be called as complex compound For example, we can say Fe Cn6 3 minus. And more examples will be Fe Cn6 4 minus, Cu NH3 4 2 plus, Vpt Cl4 2 minus. So these are all the examples of complex compounds. Please remember complex formation is possible, which is due to comparatively smaller sizes of the metal ions their high ionic charges, the vacant d orbitals availability. Traveling ahead, we have catalytic properties. Eating junk food uh, causes indigestion and which results in stomach ache. To overcome indigestion and loss of appetite, whom do you visit? Of course, child specialized doctor, right? Okay. What medicine is prescribed by the doctor? Pepsin and multivitamin. What is pepsin? Pepsin is a protein. Pepsin is an enzyme. Enzymes are biological catalysts. Whenever we eat food in our body, enzymes are there that acts as the catalyst and breaks down our food into simple molecules. What is the role of pepsin in the digestion of food? Pepsin, pepsinogen is present in proenzyme form. In presence of HCl, it converts into pepsin to act on proteins for digestion, thus overcomes indigestion in children. So you can see that protein, there will be reaction between the enzyme surface with active centers and product formation will take place. So many metals and their compounds can act as catalysts. These are called inorganic catalysts. The conditions required to behave like a catalyst are free valence electrons, second, availability of vacant d orbitals, third, large surface area, fourth, variable oxidation states. As a result, their ability to adopt multiple oxidation states and to form complexes increases. The transition metals and the compounds are known for their catalytic ability. This is referred to their ability to adopt multiple oxidation states and to form complexes. For example, vanadium 5 oxide is used as a catalyst in contract process. Finely divided iron is used in Havers process. Nickel is used in catalytic hydrogenation of oils. Palladium plus barium sulfate, which is called Lindler's catalyst, acts as a reducing agent in the hydrogenation of alkenes and alkynes. The transition metal ions can change their oxidation states so they become more effective as catalysts. Iron 3 catalyzes the reaction between iodide and per sulfate ions as shown in the reaction. This is the mechanism of the reaction. It is a two-step mechanism. Thank you. Good day.